In this video, we're going to discuss how to use LIFO to calculate a company's cost of goods sold or ending inventory when the company uses a perpetual inventory system. So quick note, LIFO is not permitted under international financial reporting standards, okay? but it is allowed under US GAAP. So let's say that we had a company with a series of purchases. So we've got a retail company. Let's say they make clothing for cats. Okay, so they make purchases of this cat clothing and then they sell some occasionally. Okay, so on January 1st, they purchased 20 units at $35 a unit. And then five days later, they purchased 30 units for $40 a unit. And then on January 8th, they sold 40 units. Now, they also made a purchase later, but here's the thing. Because we're using a perpetual inventory system, we're going to continuously update the inventory and also in some kit when we make a sale, the cost of goods sold account whenever we have a transaction. Okay, Periodic is different. Periodic inventory system, we wait until the end of the period and then we say, okay, let's do our LIFO last units in or the first out, the cost of goods sold and so forth. But here it's different. When we're perpetually doing it, here's what's going to happen. So on the first, we're going to say, okay, well, we bought uh, 20 units at $35 a unit. So we're going to increase inventory by $700, right? And then we're going to increase inventory when we make another purchase. Okay? But then on January 8th, we sell 40 units of inventory. So as of this point in time, January 8th, we have to make a journal entry. We have to make a journal entry. And we're going to debit cost of goods sold, and we're going to credit inventory. But the question is, how much? How much are we going to do this for? Because we have to use LIFO as this cost flow assumption to see what the numbers are here. Okay, we don't wait till the end of the period to do it. That's periodic and we're going to do it as of right now. So think about it like this. I'm going to ignore this right here because as of January 8th, we don't even know that this is going to happen yet. Like this is the future. January 13th is the future when we're talking about January 8th, making this journal entry. Okay, so that's gonna be confusing for some people. If it is, check out the video on uh, LIFO with the periodic uh, inventory system. But here we go. So we sold 40 units, okay? So on January 8th, we're gonna say, okay, th li li uh, LIFO is last in, first out. So of those 40 units, we're gonna take the 30 from the, those are the last, those are the most recent purchases. Okay, so we're gonna have 30 units at $40 a unit. But then we have 40 sold, so 10 are going to come out of this, right? From January 1st, we're going to have 10. Okay, so 10 at $35 a unit and 30 at $40 a unit. That is going to be the cost of goods sold. And then everything else, because this is the only sale that, that we have here, everything else at the end of the period, our ending inventory is going to be $1,600. Let's say at the end of the month or whatever, if, assuming these are the only transactions, okay? So in the ending inventory, so basically, so we took the 30 went to cost of goods sold and then 10 of that 20 went to cost of goods sold. So then the ending inventory is gonna include the remaining 10 here at $35 a unit. And then it's gonna have this 25 at $50 a unit. Okay, that's the, that's the end of the period. Let's say January 15th uh, was the end of the, that, that reporting period. And so we say, okay, Here's what the ending inventory is as of that time. And then the cost of goods sold for that month or that uh, two week period, whatever it is, would be $1,550, okay? So the key is, and this is what confuses people, when you're using LIFO with the perpetual inventory method, if you have some transaction here, remember that, that as of January 8th, this hasn't happened yet, okay? So perpetual, we're saying, okay, here, we bought inventory. Okay, let's increase the inventory account. Buy more inventory, let's increase the inventory account. Sell inventory, okay, as of this date, January 8th, what are the most recent purchases, okay? The most recent purchases here was the 30, and then here are 10 of those 20, okay? And that's how we figure the cost of goods sold, okay? So now, you might have a question too. You might say, okay, well, what if, what if we do a physical count at the end of this uh, reporting period, and we do the physical count, and it only shows fourteen hundred dollars of inventory, right? We can't maybe some inventory was stolen or become damaged or we just lost it or something like that. So we only have fourteen hundred dollars of inventory. Then, if that were the case, 
then clearly our ending inventory would be overstated by $200. Okay, it'd be overstated by $200. And so what we would do, um, it, companies do a couple of things. The, the, the theoretically correct way to do it would be to increase the cost of goods sold from $1,550 to $1,750, right? To increase it by $200. And then obviously our ending inventory would be $1,400 because we're saying we did a count and that was what the inventory was at. Okay, some companies, however, instead of book, so, so we've got this expense, so we debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for 200 but some companies well instead of debiting cost of goods sold they'll debit like other expense okay so there'll be like an inventory shortage expense and it goes into other expenses on, on the income statement so there's some diversity of practice here in accounting but think about it like this way if you're taking the cpa ex exam or something you should really be booking this to cost of goods sold and then just reducing our inventory again this is only if we do a physical account and see that the amount of inventory that we actually have on hand differs from what the ending inventory is based on the transactions above.